This is not the first time Pagani Design has made an homage of this watch. But this 2023 model has some important changes, including a smaller case, shorter lug-to-lug -lug distance, and probably the most important difference, a much, much better movement inside. This is the Pagani PD1762, the 2023 model. Now at the timeless video, you can find this watch at the Pagani Design flagship store on AliExpress for 169 US dollars. It's important to note here that this looks identical to the previous model, which is cheaper, but that used the pearl movement. And in my opinion, if you're interested in this watch, you definitely want the NH34 movement inside. Since I never owned the previous version of this watch to compare it against, I spoke to some people who did to hear and understand their experience with it. And essentially, everybody said the same thing, that it's a good watch for the money when you look at the fit and finish and the overall appearance. But their pearl movement, which was in that older model, was just very hit or miss. I even had a couple of people who told me that their watch lasted less than one year. So upgrading this model to the uh, NH34 movement is a very welcome addition indeed. Now, I don't know about you guys, but for me personally, at $170, I am looking for my watch to last a lot longer than one year. So is this new model worth considering? You know, let's take a closer look and you can decide for yourself. Hey everyone, if you like these videos, please do me a favor and consider subscribing. It would really help out the channel. Now let's get on with the review. The case construction is 316L stainless steel with a diameter coming in at 40 millimeters, not including the crown guards. On the side, we have a lug to lug distance of a nice and compact 47 millimeters and an overall thickness of 12 and a half millimeters. Now this new version of the watch is two millimeters shorter in diameter from the old version and now includes female end links. I had no problems wearing this as my daily driver on my seven inch wrist. The watch has a very nice and refined brushed finish on the top of the case and the bracelet done in a vertical direction. On the side of the case, we have a high polished area which mimics the treatment found on the side of the bracelet. All of the edges are nicely finished off and there are no sharp edges or corners on the top or bottom of the case. Where the case and the bracelet meet up, there is a nice alignment with no visible gaps. On the inside of one of the lugs, there may be a quarter of a millimeter space between it and the bracelet, but again, it's smooth to the touch and at this price point, it's very well done and impressive. I can see why people have commented the fit and finish on a previous version was top notch for the money. There's really nothing to complain about here. Turning the watch over, on the back we have an exhibition screw down case back. Now this is one of the things that is different on this watch versus the watch that it is homaging, but it is the same as the previous version from Pagani. The text here reads 100 meters water resistant, stainless steel, and Pagani design. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know I always like a peek inside the engine room. My one complaint here is that Pagani Design did not take more advantage of this. There are no embellishments to the movement, no engraving, no color, nothing. Even Invicta adds a yellow router when they have an exhibition window. Pagani Design could have made this into more of a wow factor. Moving on inside the case, we have the Seiko NH34 automatic movement. Now, like I said earlier, this is the single biggest improvement to this version in my opinion. Whether you're a fan of Seiko or you think they've become too overpriced in recent years, I think we can all agree that Seiko's budget-friendly movements are what makes these micro-brand watches so intriguing. For the specs of the NH34 movement, we have 24 joules, it beats at 21,600 beats an hour, it's a 41 hour power reserve, it does hack, and it does hand wind. Now the listed accuracy is negative 20 to plus 40 seconds a day. However, my particular watch is running at a minus six seconds per day, according to my watch app. 
at the three o'clock position, we have a signed crown with the Bagani Design logo. At six and a half millimeters in width and four millimeters in depth, it's pretty much dead on for average crown sizes. During my everyday testing, I had no issues with threading the crown on or off or hand winding the movement. There is a nice pop distinguishing the different positions. Now, this is a screw down crown, which means that you do need to unscrew it before you can hand wind it. Pulling the crown out to the first position and turning it moves the GMT hand in one hour increments. Turning it the other direction changes the date. And pulling the crown out to the second position hacks the second hand and sets a time. Moving on to the face of the watch, I think it's important to start with the obvious. This is an homage watch. So while it is good looking, that credit doesn't actually go to Bagani Design. Now starting with the bezel, we have Arabic numbers counting in twos around the bezel. And these are engraved and filled in with black. This of course is not a rotating bezel. And the brushing here is done in a vertical direction. On the dial itself, we have a black colored minute track printed directly on the dial. And inside of that, we have applied indices, which are surrounded by black and filled with loom. The black color here adds a nice touch of contrast and helps to keep things legible. At the six and nine o'clock position, we have rectangle batons with circles everywhere else, except for the 12 o'clock position, where we have a downward pointing triangle. There is no indice at the three o'clock. Instead, we simply have the Cyclops magnifier over the date window. Now, personally, I am not a fan of these. While it does make reading dates easier, it also gets in the way of when I'm trying to read the time between 13 and 18 minute marks. Now, since this is an homage watch, Pagani Design probably felt that they needed to include it. But it makes me wonder, how many people actually like this feature? The GMT's hand is a decent size and extends past the indices to the minute track. But keep in mind that this hand is actually pointing to the bezel, not the minute track. The minute hand here is too short in my opinion. It stops short of the minute track and really gets lost behind that Cyclops window. The watch that this is homaging has a longer minute hand, and I wish Pagani would have followed suit. This is a miss, in my opinion. The hour hand and the sweeping second hand is also not long enough, but it's more forgivable here because it still gets the job done. The loom here is BGW9, and this is one of the areas where I'm going to differ from my friend Jason the Watch Guy. While Jason thought the loom here was terrible, I found that, you know, it passed my loom test. Now, this is an important distinction. My loom test is different than most reviewers. I don't expose the watch to a flashlight and time how long it glows, although that is a very consistent way to test. For my everyday loom test, I wear the watch, get an average amount of light exposed to it during the day, and then set it alongside my bedside table and see if I can read the time at four in the morning. In the middle of the night, when my eyes are fully dilated, that is when I want to know if I can read the time. And again, this watch passed my everyday loom test. Now, one last thing I want to mention here, and this is about all GMT watches or any watch that has 24 hours on it for that matter not specifically this watch. In theory, I love the idea of tracking two time zones, but in practice, I find it can be a challenge because you are taking the same amount of space normally used for 12 numbers and adding twice the amount of numbers to it. That means the numbers are twice as close together. And as time gets closer to the next hour, it gets harder to make out which number the GMT hand is actually pointing to. This is what I mean. Here, the time is 10 minutes before the hour, and you can easily see that the main hour hand is between the six and the seven, but the GMT hand appears like it's already pointing at 1300 hours. 
In reality, the time is 1250, not 1350. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you guys have the same issue. This watch comes with a sapphire crystal. On the website, I could not find any mention of an anti-reflective coating. In my personal experience, I found this watch performs fairly well outside with only minor reflections. And that brings us to the bracelet. It is 20 millimeters wide at the lugs and tapers down to 16 millimeters at the clasp. It is a signed clasp with a fold over safety and three micro adjustments. It is fully milled, which is nice to see here. The edges on the clasp are not as smooth as on the case or the bracelet. I would call the edges on the clasp acceptable. Not more, not less. You're not going to cut yourself on it, but this is an area where Pagani could improve. For the bracelet itself, we have solid links, as well as solid end links, and it comes with screw pins. They even supply a small screwdriver, which I have to admit comes in very handy. Overall, I found this to be a very solid, decent bracelet for the money. So let's go over the specs for this watch. We have a sapphire crystal, the automatic NH34 movement, a diameter of 40 millimeters, thickness of 12 and a half millimeters, lug width 20 millimeters, a lug to lug distance of 47 millimeters, and finally a water resistance of 100 meters. So let's go over the pros and cons. For pros, aesthetics, it is a good looking homage watch. You get a sapphire crystal, the dial is very legible, a good fit and finish, and of course that NH34 automatic movement. For cons, the clasp is not quite as smooth as the rest of the watch. The minute hand is just too short, and there's no embellishment on the movement to look at when looking through the exhibition window. So my final thoughts on this watch. Now, I would not have considered this watch before with the other movement in it, but now that it's been upgraded to the NH34, I would say, you know, if you're looking for an homage watch, I think this is a good one for the money. Okay, my friends, that is it. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, remember, buy whatever it is that you love. This is your watch collection. I'll see you next time.